Hey guys, welcome back. So you can obviously see by the title of the video, today's video is all about one of my absolute favorite romance authors, Jill Shalvis. Now, if you have been around for a while, then you no doubt have heard me talk about her countless, countless times. And that is with good reason because she is an absolutely brilliant romance author. She's one of my favorites whose books I just, they're auto buys for me, honestly. So I wanted to um, not only use this video as a time to talk about her and fangirl over her, but to also kind of give you some suggestions if you have never read her books, or if you are new to her books, or even if you are new to the romance genre and you are looking for some fabulous contemporary romance authors to buy. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so just I guess a quick bio rundown about who exactly Jill Shalvis is. Like I said, obviously she is a romance writer. She has written over 50 books um, and that ranges from contemporary romance, which is things that she is what I would say most popular or most well known for to just general women's fiction. And she's even written um, a couple of Harlequin paperback novels as well. Those are way, way old. <laughs> but for today's video, I'm actually going to be focusing on her um, contemporary romances because those are my favorites of hers. And now, um, when it comes to Jill Shalvis's works, uh, there are there's a very distinct style and that's one of the reasons why I love her. Um, I could easily pick up a book without knowing who it's by and just by kind of reading what the characters and the storyline is about instantly recognizable that it's her work. She has such a unique standout voice and it's just, it's awesome. So in terms of the kind of contemporary romances that she does write, I would say that they are most definitely romantic comedies. She is such a brilliant writer when it comes to conveying comedy and weaving humorous moments into romance. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things that when it's done well, it just seems so effortless. But if you read a book and it's it can be a little cringy if it's not done well. So um, as far as what you can look forward to if you were to pick up her works, I would say obviously there's the comedic moments. Um, and another thing is that there are contemporary references. So obviously I've said this before, she is a contemporary romance author, but beyond that, what I enjoy about her work is that she incorporates a lot of uh, contemporary pop culture into her work. And because I read her work as it comes out, a lot of it are references that I am completely familiar with and I know exactly what she's talking about. And most often than not, it's used in humorous ways. So um, let me just kind of bring up an example. Uh, I know there was a scene in a particular book of hers where she had her heroine making Harry Potter references. Now, granted, the book didn't come out you know, in the 90s when Harry Potter did, but it is clearly a cult classic today. And any book that has a Harry Potter reference and uses it for comedic effect is a win to me. So that's just one of the examples. And, you know, I believe she's mentioned Twitter in her book, uh, Facebook, everything like that. And it's just it's just an extra nod to let you know that she's got the, the pulse on what's happening today and that she is an ever evolving author who keeps up with the trends. Another thing that you can expect from her books are the setting. So more often than not, like a lot of romance authors, her books are set in small towns. Uh, this is something that I am just a personal fan of, though not all of the books. I know there is one particular series that's my favorite that is actually set in San Francisco, but I will get more into that later. Uh, but for the most part, small towns, uh, small fictional towns. I know that she's got some books set in California oftentimes, some books set in Colorado. Uh, I believe there's one that is set in Idaho. Now, Jill Chavez herself lives in Northern California, which um, let's just take a moment because she is one of the rare few authors who I follow on social media and she's constantly posting pictures of where she lives, which I believe is in like the Redwoods or maybe like Big Bear area. I, I don't I don't know. I have to double check, but her views are absolutely gorgeous things to be envied and um, straight out of a postcard. So um, knowing that it totally makes sense when she is giving the descriptions in her book, you get a lot of like um, small town nature, clear lake, friendly neighbor kind of vibes, which 
Again, something I'm totally here for. Um, another thing that you can expect are the type of heroes as well as the type of women that she writes. Now, um, as far as her heroines, I would say that they are um, definitely sassy. Now, there are varying degrees because there are some times when her women are more alpha and outspoken and know what they want and they go for it uh, and they're sassy, of course. But then there are other times where maybe she's got more of the girl next door type of heroine who is still sassy and she still speaks her mind. And that's one of the things that I appreciate because despite, you know, how outgoing the female may or may not be, she always, um, stands up for herself, which, you know, I'm here for it in my romance. <laughs> now, let's talk about the heroes. Uh, one word, alpha. <laughs> She writes the best alpha heroes. Now, I don't mean that in the sense to where the guys are jerks um, or anything like that or bossy, though some of the guys can be a little bossy. But um, even though their personalities may differ from being like the gruff, silent type to the popular boy next door or um, outdoorsman or adventure seeker, one thing that they always have in common is their sheer maleness, their, their alphaness, meaning that uh, they go after they, their women in, in a consensual way, of course, <laughs> but they go after their, their women. They know what they want. What I really appreciate is that a lot of her heroes, once they kind of have that aha moment, whether that happens in the very beginning of the book from the jump or if it's a revelation that happens later on, once they have that aha moment about the fact that they want to be with the heroine, they will go after her. They will make their feelings known. Now, granted, that's probably where some of the escapism in romance comes in because who doesn't want their significant other or a man to come in and sweep them off their feet and tell them how beautiful they are and be just open with their feelings. But she does it in a way that's very realistic um, and I think between the way that she writes her characters and the setting, it, it just all comes together into this just perfect package of just uh, romance books that I love. So that said, let's kind of dive into an overview of her series. Now, like I said, she has written more than 50 books. She's won countless well-deserved awards. So there's no way I can go through every single series or every single book, even though I want to, but this video would be way too long. But I'm just gonna kind of recap um, what I think some of my favorite ones are, as well as ones where if you are new to her or if you're new to romance, um, maybe you can try these out. I think that they are great places to start. Now, before we jump in, I do wanna say one thing that I love about her series is that, um, they can be read separately as standalones and they can also be read in order or as part of the series. I have done both. I don't have a preference. Well, <laughs> the only preference that I have is like binging them and reading them back to back, but it doesn't have to be in any kind of order. But um, that's pretty much it. The way many of her series are constructed and the series that I'm going to talk about in just a moment are you've got a, um, a group of characters that you see throughout the series. Series. Each book focuses on a particular couple and then oftentimes you will have these side characters who end up becoming main characters in their own story. So the reason I'm saying that you can read them separately and as a standalone is that it's never a surprise at least in her books, who's going to end up together. So if you happen to read book five and you see who gets together from book three because it's referenced, that's not the spoiler part because let's be honest, um, you already know before you started the book that they were going to end up. It's the journey and it's the things that they do to get there. So that's kind of how the books are loosely tied together and how you're able to read them as a standalone and in um, sequential order. So that said, let's talk about some of my favorite series. So starting off, my absolute favorite series of hers is the Heartbreaker Bay series. Now, I for sure have talked about this countless times. Um, I'm looking over here because I could, I can technically hold up a book, but I'll be honest, you guys, her books are ones that I majority have as ebooks simply because of the instant gratification. <laughs> I love her books that much that I do not want to go hunting at the library or the bookstore to find them. I want to download them, devour them, and be done. So I don't really have any books to hold up other than like a couple here. But anyway, so her Heartbreaker Bay series 
is I would say kind of like a Melrose Place style, meaning that it is set in a small pocket in San Francisco. Side note, this is one of her um, only, one of her few series that is set in a metropolitan city. But anyway, um, it's set in a small neighborhood in San Francisco and it centers around this, um, I guess, Melrose Place style work, live, play, uh, set of buildings and so these set of buildings contain all of our future characters and our future couples some of them live there some of them work there um, some of them do both and what I really love about this series is just well, I mean I guess this goes for all the series but most especially in this one is just the friendships in them so obviously each book has its own couples but what I love other than seeing the couples get together are how the characters interact with each other as friends. So um, all in all, I think you have maybe like um, five or six men and five or six women who couple up eventually, but they will have their own standalone scenes where they're hanging out as girlfriends or hanging out as dudes and doing their own thing. And I really love that because it really fleshes out the characters and you know that they are people and they're human beyond just getting with another person. They've got other purposes in the world and we see them at their jobs. All of that sounds really boring, like who wants to see somebody at their job? But the way that she writes it is just exquisite and you're definitely interested in it. So um, as far as what book to start off in that series, again, you can read it in any order, but my favorite is Sweet Little Lies. It deals with a woman who I believe is a um, one of those uh, tour boat uh drivers <laughs> she a oh, captain i don't know why i couldn't think of that word she's a tour boat captain and then the guy that she ends up getting up getting together with is a bar owner whose bar is part of that like melrose place style so um that one is my absolute favorite because um a couple of reasons i think just the chemistry between them i think her job is really fun and interesting um she's very resistant so he has to give chase a lot of the way and ugh, it's just so good all around okay so my next favorite series and definitely one that i suggest you read if you want to get into jill chavis or just romance that are sweet and contemporary anyway is her Lucky Harbor series. I want to say this was my first introduction to her, though if I'm being honest, I can't remember, but um, Simply Irresistible is the first book and coincidentally it's my favorite out of them. But anyway, so this one is basically about a um, three sisters. Each book focuses on a different sister, but the overarching plot line is that it's three sisters who are estranged and they end up inheriting this inn. And so each of them move to, I forget what town it's set in, but each of them move to that town to go to the inn. They each have intentions of, uh, well, each of them have different intentions. I believe like one of them wants to sell it immediately. One of them wants to live there. One of them wants to just like fix it up and get it running as an actual inn. And what I love about this series, um, again, aside from the romance, is the sisterly relationship because the three of them could not be any more different. The fact that they are estranged adds a secondary layer of plot to the story. So in addition to the romance and how they get with each of their heroes, seeing them um, form this bond together is something that's really sweet, something that I was not expecting in my romance because let's be honest, um, you know, you hear contemporary romance and you think it's just going to be fluff. And I don't say that in a bad way, but you don't imagine or anticipate a lot of drama or a lot of family drama and this one kind of had that but not in like a telenovela kind of drama just you know people and families trying to sort it out so that's another one of my suggestions especially if you like your romances a little more layered next up we have her wilder series so this one is also set in a small town um is it set in california i think so i think it's set in like northern california but anyway um instant attraction is my favorite of the series but the series in general is about a set of brothers who run this um expedition group 
company kind of thing. So basically, if you wanted to go like extreme exploring, um, you know, backpacking or hiking in the mountains for a variety of days or whitewater rafting, all of that kind of extreme stuff, you would go to them and they would be your guide and all of that. So um, this one is fun because it's similar in the sense of it's similar to Lucky Harbor series in the sense to where it deals with siblings. But obviously it's got its differences because one, it's men. <laughs> and then two, their relationship is totally different. They're not estranged, um, but they're each dealing with their own stuff. Um, one of them is kind of the black sheep. Um, the others are kind of, you know, you've got the responsible one, you've got the wild and crazy one. And, you know, at the end of the day, they each find love in their own separate way, which, oh, and again, because she writes her heroes as alphas, I mean, oh God, talk about testosterone. Like, read that if that's what you really want to get your fix though. <laughs> okay, so if you're wanting your romances a little bit more on the sweet side, then definitely check out her Animal Magnetism series. So first of all, it deals with animals. I mean, it goes without saying because of the title, but um, there are animals incorporated into the stories in some kind of way. So it's set in Idaho, small town yet again. And the first book, just to kind of like level set and kick off the series, it takes place um, around a kennel. And so we've got a injured soldier who comes back um, from serving and he syncs with, um, I believe, a fourth grade teacher. She's one of those girl next door sweet types that I was referencing earlier. But the two of them get together and one of the things that bonds them obviously is a dog in some kind of way don't want to give too much away but it's super super heartwarming that's why I was saying that this series is perfect if you want sweet romance because um, I feel like the addition of pets into the story really um, softens the characters and makes them a lot more sweeter because you've got you know for example this gruff alpha male who doesn't really say much and is very stoic but you put a puppy in its lap and you just melt you know so um yeah i love this series i would say rumor has it is one of my favorites that's the plot line that i was just talking about with the um veteran and the school teacher and i believe this one is a pretty lengthy series so you can kind of dive in anywhere i don't actually think this is the first book in the series it might be the fourth I'll have to double check. <laughs> okay, last suggestion that I'm going to give you guys is her Cedar Bay series. Coincidentally, I said I wasn't going to hold books up, but I like. But coincidentally, it's one of the books that I own simply because I picked it up at a used bookstore. But um, this is uh, one of her other kind of outdoorsy romances. The one that I held up, um, actually, no, this isn't it. Um, <laughs> Second Chance Summer is the one that I would recommend. I don't believe that's the first one either. I probably should have checked before I started this video, but hey, whatever. Um, so this one also um, centers around a group of brothers who run this inn. It's not necessarily like wild adventures like the previous one, but it is a group of brothers kind of coming together and working in business. The um, book that I was referencing, I believe one of them comes back uh, to town. And so he ends up meeting the one of the women who needs to find a job and she ends up working at the inn. The two of them, you know, try to stay away from each other because they don't want to mix business and pleasure and, you know, hook up with any of their coworkers. Obviously, we know that plan doesn't work, <laughs> but it's a good thing because they make a cute couple afterward. But this is another one that I really enjoy. Um, out of all of her books, the ones that have the uh, men who just are different personalities are ones that I really flock towards. So like this series, the Wilder series, I like seeing the groups of brothers kind of figuring out things on their own. Um, one thing that I will say about her books that I absolutely like is that they're not angsty. They're not overly dramatic. Personally, that's just something that I don't flock to in romances. I think that there are just enough stakes to make it enjoyable and make you want to see how the characters resolve the conflict and end up together. But for the most part, you're again, you're not getting like a telenovela or anything just too over the top and unbelievable. Just some good old fashion romance. Well, it's not old fashioned. <laughs> I will say, you know, there are the graphic scenes, the sweet scenes, all of that in between. So don't think it's anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so those I think are, I think I listed five. So those are my five top series of hers, as well as the 
five books from each of the series that I would suggest you start with. If you have read Jill Shalvas, please let me know what your favorite one is because I am always up for chatting about her and I like to hear which books of hers people enjoy the most. Like I said, Heartbreaker Bay is my favorite one just because it encompasses everything that I just need in a romance. <laughs> and further than that, it's just so fun and so funny. And I absolutely adore that because sometimes, you know, especially if you're reading books as escapism, you want to laugh, you know, not all the time, but at least for me, I like to laugh. And if my romance has some LOL moments, then all the better. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. And if you want to see more content like it, happy reading and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.